Where are the Greater Toronto prices headed with the rate hikes? With the average prices dropping from February to March, with the interest rates going up from 0.5% to 1% with Central Bank, and with the foreign virus tax increasing to 20%, there has been quite a bit of fear in the market. I must say the fear is more psychological than actual financial fear. Will we see a crash in the current market with the new changes? No. Will there be a correction in certain markets? Absolutely. In this video, I will share with you what you should look for as a Canadian homeowner in this shifting market. Unlike this weather where we have snow in the spring, the market is a little more predictable. And let me share with you why. Pre-pandemic, the interest rates with the Bank of Canada was at 1.75%. Currently, we're sitting at 1%. If we keep going at this pace, it won't be long until we exceed 2%. The media does a great job in promoting fear in people's minds by saying the interest rates are going up and will continue to go higher. However, our interest rates currently are lower than they were pre-pandemic. We needed the rates to be higher with the inflation at where it's at now. God forbid if the economy is at risk, we need flexibility to lower the rates and quickly improve the economy. Notice whenever the Bank of Canada increases their rates, they give us notice well in advance to allow us to make changes to our mortgage terms if need be to properly react to the situation. If you have a fixed interest rate, nothing changes. If you have a variable interest rate, your payments still won't change. You'll simply be paying more towards interest than you would towards your own principal. If you're in a variable rate, I would consult with your lender to adjust your monthly payments to reflect the rate height so you don't end up in a negative amortization. What I mean by that is if you were paying X amount for 25 years amortization and now your interest rates went up, you would need to reflect the monthly payments and increase them to offset the higher interest rates and be on track to pay off your mortgage at the end of your amortization. Reach out to me or talk to your lender if this doesn't make sense. I hope I didn't scare you about increasing your monthly payments. On a side note, to keep things a little lighter, here's a real estate joke. Where did the man that was told he had a few months to live spend most of his time in the house? In the living room. All right, before I get into reasons of where the market is headed, my name is Sid Chandra and my team and I spend a lot of time practicing real estate here in the greater Toronto area. If you'd like to chat about buying, selling or investing in the greater Toronto real estate market, feel free to click on the link below and book a call with me directly to talk about your goals in the near future. If you haven't already, hit that like button so we can show this video to more awesome people like yourself. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe so you get prompted every time I release a new video. Based on these changes, let's look at the different groups of people that are affected the most with the current market. We have move up buyers, first time buyers, and investors. Move up buyers are people that want to upsize into a bigger space. They typically want more bedrooms, they're expanding their family, and they're willing to make compromises with their wants versus their needs and not just completely turn down the idea of making a move just with the interest rate hikes. So these rate hikes don't necessarily affect them as much because they're willing to make adjustments to their price range to buy something at a lower price point. They also have a home to sell and they understand that when they buy a property that's larger, they will see more savings than they will on the price adjustment on the sale of their house. First time buyers are one of the mostly affected groups of people because they max out on their pre-approval amounts and when there is a rate hike, that drastically affects what they can buy and because they have to already qualify for a higher interest rate due to the stress test now they have to qualify for two percent more than what they were quoted or 5.25 percent whichever is higher plus because the fixed rate has gone higher than four percent now they have to qualify for an interest rate of six percent to go through the stress test which means now they qualify for a lower purchase price than they did a month or two ago and to top that off, they're faced with higher purchase prices, so their overall options are a lot more limited. The next set of buyers that are affected the most are investors. If you know a seasoned investor, you know they typically only look at numbers, particularly the monthly expenses versus income. With the interest rates going up, they won't cash flow as much on properties and in some cases may be in a negative cash flow situation. Does this mean that the market will crash? I'll get into that in a minute. 
But first, let's look at some other groups of people that are affected with the rule changes as well. Besides foreigners, the government is also going after property flippers. Typically, if you own a property and sell it within 12 months, you have to pay 50% capital gains tax. Now the government has implemented 100% capital gains tax, which means if you sell your property within 12 months, you have to pay the entire 100% capital gains. If you have spoken to me about investments, I always advise against pre-construction projects. The reason being you have to pay a lot in taxes. Normally, investors buy pre-construction properties to be able to assign them before the occupancy date. However, what they don't realize is the amount of taxes they have to pay when they do the assignment sale. For example, if you end up assigning a sale before the occupancy date, you not only have to pay your capital gains tax, but HST of 13% on not only the capital gains, but the deposit itself as well. Now for the million dollar question. Which way will the prices actually go? First of all, the foreign tax buyer implications will not likely affect the market as much as we think. If we look at the market as a whole, the foreign buyers amount to only 3.4% of the buyers in Ontario and 4.8% in Vancouver, which won't likely have a large impact overall on the market. As for investors, yes, their carrying costs are going up, but so are the rental rates. With inflation at where it is and with people going back to offices, we will likely see rental rates go up as well. With all these rule changes in the market, it's normal for people to be fearful and sit back and watch how the market unfolds. When new announcements are being made, it creates uncertainties and uncertainties create fear. It would be impossible to predict when the lowest point in the market is. That would be like predicting when the Toronto Raptors will win the next championship. Although that would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? We will likely see prices hover around the same price point for the next few months. But in the long run, they will likely keep rising over the next few years for various reasons like high immigration counts, high inflation rates, high construction costs and overall supply and demand concerns. If you are looking for pre-construction projects, you will likely see builders keep increasing the prices over the next few months. There's no way for them to lower the prices if it costs them more to build the homes themselves. If you're looking for good deals in this market, it's best to focus on the resale market because individual owners are a lot more emotional than developers. If you are someone who's always concerned about the rule changes, about the little things, then this market is not for you because you'll always be stressed about the next uncertainty. If you are a long-term thinker who can see the bigger picture of rising prices over the years, then this market is perfect for you. Great investors always find opportunities when others are fearful. If you are qualified for a mortgage, you can get some great deals in this resale market. That's my take on the current market situation and where it's headed. What are your thoughts? Will the next rate hikes drop the prices even further or continue to shoot up like they were before? Comment below. Until next time, this is Sid Chandra and we provide results that move you.